Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Amateur Investing for my monthly report for August and a little bit of September where I go through my dividend income, my crypto income, my stock buys and sells, my crypto trades, all that good stuff all in one video following my journey all the way back from November of 2019 when I started with $5,000. Today, we are at $171,000, sadly down from nearly $400,000 at the peak. However, still pumping along, doing very well, and uh, we're going to be jumping into all of my insights and covering all of this in just a quick moment after a word from my sponsor today. A big thank you and shout out to my sponsor, Cake Wallet, which is an open source, non-custodial Bitcoin and Monero wallet that also has a built-in exchange. It's available on iOS and Android. All right, thanks again to my sponsor. Let's jump into it. So as always, we dive into dividends and cover these first. I am now over $2,000 worth of dividends earned. Before I did that full liquidation back in January, February, I was at about 1730 and I've earned 359 since. I just have this broken out because, you know, it looks like I was just progressing super, super well. And then it just kind of just completely fell off. That's because I sold 75% of my stocks, which was at the top and it was perfect timing. So no complaints here, but that needs to be understood as to why that kind of fell off because otherwise this would just be ever increasing. Uh, but I'm slowly starting to add back into it and um and i and I'll, it'll be increasing in the near future however this was one of the lower months of earnings with just 22 dollars 56 in the month of august um you know it is what it is but it's still going pretty well given all the moves and things that i've been doing and you know i am down the market has been doing pretty poorly we'll take a look at that in a little bit but I expect this to start going back up now that I'm putting back into it and uh, I'll just keep, you know, building it up over time. And, you know, hey, we're buying in some of the lower values now and I expect that to eventually go back up. So no harm, no foul. In terms of crypto income, I've now earned a total of $1,319. This is going up a lot more than my dividends because I've been putting a lot more into it. Now you have to do keep in mind there was a big drop off here as well because I liquidated about $7,000 of HBD and that was earning me quite a bit. So I'm earning significantly less, but I'm again, I'm slowly starting to build that up and I'm building up my Atom and a little tiny bit of Tron because Tron doesn't give you a very good APY, but I still like the ecosystem so i said eh, I'll, I'll put a little bit back into tron and a little bit back into hbd realistically though if it wasn't so undiversified i would just be staking my atom atom from the cosmos blockchain because you get a great apy and i'm very confident in the way that it operates i just feel much more confident doing that than anything else but that's just what i'm doing personally and how much I made last month in August was pretty solid. It was almost double the previous month with Adam doing much better at $111.01. So, you know, that's starting to go back up. I have been putting a little bit more into Adam, HBD, and Tron. So, you know, naturally I should be getting a little bit more as well. And I will continue to track that and see how my earnings play out. But I have noticed I'm getting more and more uh, Adam, which is great because you can easily compound it. I'm staking it in the trust wallet and you can easily compound it and keep earning and getting your rewards uh, very, very quickly and easily. I mean, you could compound every day or every hour even if you really wanted to, but um, that'll help you earn more and more over time. I do it every like week or two when I've earned around like a one full Adam, I'll just compound that, but you could do it as often as you want, which also is a massive benefit, right? I mean, you could do the same thing with Tron, um, but then you have to claim it, go back in, stake it, and then vote. So there's a little bit more steps to it, but you can essentially do the same thing. It's just much faster and easier to do this with Adam. And I mean, they're offering five, six times the amount of APY as Tron, and they're, and they're more decentralized. So, you know, a lot of uh, reasons why you might do Adam staking over Tron staking. For other passive income, I haven't earned any other like music royalties or anything like that. In terms of my crypto portfolio, 
my total crypto as of the time that I recorded this was $119,151 in my portfolio. And you can see that was at the beginning of September, which is down about 5.986 ish percent from August, which, you know, it is what it is. Um, things are going to fluctuate. It, it just, it is what it is. So I'm not super concerned. I mean, we went down 40%, we went up 40%. Um, I still think we've already touched the bottom. I don't believe we're going to go any lower unless we have like all out world war three or something. And we have ETH two, uh, ETH, the or ETH merge has gone through. That's probably the biggest thing. Uh, we won't actually see a lot of those effects upgrade like gas fees, scalability, etc. A lot of that isn't going to come until early 2023 with the surge phase. And if you want to know more about this, go and check out my recent video talking all about Ethereum and the upgrade. And then I also have a video on how to claim your ETHW, which is the proof of work chain, so you can get all that good free money as well. That being said, though, uh, moving on to stock investments, uh, my total portfolio at the time of recording this was 9918 but I have since added another $1,000 or so, which I invested uh, mainly into XEI, which is one of my ETFs, but I'll get into my individual moves in a moment. You can just see the, the graph charting this as well. And then my total portfolio, which this is not correct. Yeah, $160,696 at the time of recording this, currently at 171000 So it's gone up since, which is good, but a little bit lower from the previous month. Again, I'm not super concerned. I still think we already hit our bottom. I don't expect us to go back to that. Not that I'm saying it's impossible, but I'm very, very bullish on what the ETH merge is going to bring us in the next five, six months. So I'm very, very bullish on Ethereum and Bitcoin I'm bullish on in general because you know the halving is eventually gonna come around and we're gonna get back into it and get doing the same things that we've always been doing. So again, I'm not too worried you know, I keep saying that, that's my, I keep going, I'm not too worried, I'm not too worried, but you know, it is what it is. Right now, my budgets are pretty much frozen because uh, I've dramatically changed everything. So I'm not going to report on my budgets like I normally do. I'm going to make a new video eventually in the future where I cover my budgeting process and all of the new things and things I'm doing differently because the last time I did a budgeting video was a very long time ago. So I'll be covering all that stuff in a in its own video and I won't be focusing as much as I have previously on budget. But I do like to keep trans be transparent with you guys. I mean, I've still spent like $38,000 this year or so. Uh, I'm going to, I'm projected to spend less than I spent last year, which is good because then I can put more money into crypto and uh, you know you always want to be aiming to save at least 50% of your income, which I know is an insanely high number, but still um, that is what you want to aim for, even if you fall short. Um, last year I did like 65 or 70% and the year before that around the same thing. I want to be aiming for 65% and that would allow me to retire in 10 years or less and that's kind of the whole point of these videos started in November of 2019. The idea would be that by 2029, I will already have been retired and achieved my investing goals. So that is the whole point of all these videos and tracking all this stuff and sharing this with you. I'm really just sharing my journey on the way to hopefully get to that point that I'm trying to hit. So as you can see, 171,000, this is the breakout of how everything uh, looks. I mean, again, still almost all of my money is in crypto. I've been getting a bit more fiat cash to just, you know, stack up my reserves in case anything crazy happens, got some cash on the side. And uh, my next focus is going to just be to top up my stocks a little bit each month, add a little bit more to my fiat cash until I get it to exactly where I'd like, which is about $10,000 in cash and fifteen to $20,000 digitally just on my bank account i think i'm i'm pretty happy with that and then i have my backup bank account prepaid visa paypal uh, my crypto visa with money on there and then i also have gold and um 
and that might be it. But I have a lot of different venues of where I can access my money and spend it. So I'm just trying to be as best possible prepared as I can. And then once I feel like everything is 100% covered, I can just go all in on maxing out my TFSA again, building my stocks back up, even though I still really don't trust it. It feels wasteful to not be taking advantage of my TFSA. And I don't feel so confident in crypto that I want to continue just throwing all of my money at it. Um, that's why I want to get all my other finances in check and just to a point where I'm so confident in them and I've got so much stacked away that it'll never really be a huge concern to me. And then I can kind of a little bit more carelessly throw money at crypto, but uh, I'm still stacking all the crypto that I'm earning for the most part. And um, I'm selling a little portion and then using that for stocks or whatever else. But most of the crypto that I have is staying in crypto, uh, but I will be focusing a little bit more on stacking up my, my stock account and getting back up to a maxed out TFSA so I can benefit the most I can. Because again, if you're unsure of what that is in Canada, here we have a tax-free savings account where you can essentially invest in stocks and any gains that you get are all tax-free. Consequently, any losses you have are not tax deductible, but you know it is what it is. So I just wanna build out a very, very good dividend income uh, from my TFSA that I could then use in the future as part of my income or maybe even retire on that but again i'm a little skeptical with with stocks now after everything we saw where you know they could just turn off your ability to trade certain foreign stocks they can freeze your bank account very easily a lot of crazy stuff can happen that's why i'm more focused on holding cash like physical cash gold and uh just getting myself more prepared for any kind of financial issues that happen. I mean, we also saw half of Canadian uh, telecoms all go down and you were unable to spend money with your debit or even use Interac and e-transfer. So there's a lot of motivation to set yourself up for financial you know, alternatives and backups to the traditional system. There's a lot of incentive to do that. And um, I just want to make sure I'm completely squared away before I start focusing on crypto and, and stocks more so again. So that's kind of my plan right now. In terms of some of the individual purchases I've made, uh, I put that thousand dollars into XEI. I'm um, just kind of evening out my account a little bit because I was pretty heavily invested in VDY, but I just want to even this out a little bit and spread this out so it's not all in one. But I mean, they are generic ETFs for like banks, insurance, etc. anyways. So I'm pretty confident with where they're spending their money. Probably they're going to do better than I would if I did this individually. Mind you, you know, I'm still down $1,228, which is, you know, I'm not happy about it because that's negative 11%. However, if you include all the dividends that I've earned over the years, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, I'm still up at the end of the day. Um, and none of this is including before I liquidated, by the way, which I was up um, over 12. No, I was like 30% up or something like that. I had 30 grand deposited and I took out 40 grand, essentially. And uh, yeah, so I was up like 25-ish percent. Um, so I felt pretty good when I sold and I basically sold the top and then I bought back in with this 10,000 into just these ETFs, simplify my account, but yeah, it is what it is. At the end of the day, I'm still way, way, way up. But uh, in terms of when I started doing this, this is down. But it's not surprising based on the global climate for uh, the economy right now and investing. Nothing has really changed. Uh, these were from the previous one. Nothing has really changed with uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum in terms of me investing more or whatever. However, you can get your ETH W, so I'll, you know I'll, I'll keep mentioning that because go and watch my video and you can get some free ETH W. Um, they do have symbols now for Bitcoin and Ethereum to track the price automatically, which is really nice. But they don't really have like this for ninety percent of the cryptocurrencies, only like the top ones. So you know if you're doing the same thing here that I'm doing in Excel, you're still pretty limited. But you know whatever. In terms of staking cryptocurrency. As I mentioned, I got $111.01. Uh, 
uh, based on the prices, I'm now up like a dollar and eighty two cents. So you know, it, it is what it is. It'll slowly appreciate. But uh, I've also added a lot more crypto in. Um, I had about two thousand dollars US, and I split that around between a bunch of my staking stuff to kind of just top everything back up. Get these in a little bit of a better position where I have, you know, like a thousand dollars in 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 a lot of these. I wanted to have. A little over a thousand dollars in Tron and a little over a thousand dollars in HBD, and kind of focus the rest on Atom, um, and that's sort of what I've done. I'll put the next for for a while. I probably won't be topping up TRX anymore because again, it is very very low APY and what they actually offer, and it's fairly centralized, right? So I'm going to be focused mainly on topping up my HBD. Of course, all my Atom goes back into Atom. But if I do want to top up anything, I'm going to be adding more into HBD. And let me know what you guys are staking and what you feel confident in because I'm skeptical with like most staking situations or lending and all these different things. Um, even Tron is like me reluctantly staking on Tron because I don't like Justin Sun or, you know, how centralized Tron is. But, um, you know, someone mentioned this not that long ago. They're like, well, you should invest in it if you don't like him. And it's like, well, I don't like Apple. And if I hold Apple stock, it's not because I like them or don't like them. It's because it's a profitable company. Investing should generally be amoral in terms of like, do I like this person or do they have the proper ESG score or are they donating enough to charity? Um, while it's great to use your money to, you know, philanthropize or you know, invest in certain things that you want to help do better. But when you have a small amount of money, you're really not making a dent. You're just losing money on behalf of these companies that you want to believe in. But that's not an effective way to build your portfolio and, and your wealth for the future. If you're building wealth because you want to support your family or do something, you don't want to just, you know, frivolously be like, well, my, my family cannot eat tonight because we know we're supporting a good company. And it's like, well, you know, most people won't uh, be willing to do that. So I would say investing is pretty amoral aside from, you know, not investing in terrible evil things. Um, but for the most part, that's how you should approach it. Like most people grocery shop amorally. Like most people aren't like, oh, like I really think organic is better for the world so i'm going to spend the extra two dollars it's more so like if that's what you can afford or you only eat organic or whatever it's more like lifestyle it's very amoral rarely are people basing all of their buying decisions on what is like better for the world for example so that's how i approach it I me mean, maybe you don't agree but let me know what you think about your investing approach and how people should approach it but I would say, regardless of what people say to you, most people are investing to make money. Uh, and I think that should be obvious because investing is about making money, not about virtue signaling, which you can do with your own time. You can donate, you can uh, work for charities, you can volunteer. There's a lot of things that you can do to contribute that don't require you purposefully putting yourself in a bad financial position. So... Uh, a lot of the other stuff is pretty generic, like, you know, not much has changed with my privacy coin. It's all just Monero. Maybe this will change after I do my privacy coin review and if I change my mind on how I view this. But my sponsor for most of my videos is Cake Wallet for a good reason, because that's actually what I use for Monero. And if you're in the U.S., you can buy uh, gift cards directly off of their app. So it's actually very, very useful, especially for the type of stuff that I cover. That's the exact kind of thing that I would be doing, but they don't have that for Canada yet. Hopefully soon. Speculative crypto, uh, again, mainly all just Rune. Luna, I just have here for fun. Uh, nothing is really happening with Luna. That's just a wash. Um, I didn't really lose money, by the way. I took my 20 UST that I had sitting around and I bought like near the bottom and I was like, oh, just see what happens because... Everyone seemed to be doing that. And I was kind of like, eh, it's 20 UST. Like I'm not even going to, most trading pairs were disabled anyways. So it's not like I was really going to get much for it. So I said, why not? Um, Rune is really unfortunate to see it so down when it used to be at like $15. I really should have cashed out then, but you know, it is what it is. Um, Rune, I'm still in it. 
And I'm still very confident in Rune simply because the application of what Thorchain actually offers is revolutionary. And it's very underrated because most people don't see that issue and see that Thorchain is the solution to that problem. Um, but I think as people care more about decentralization and they're looking for this solution, Thorchain will become more predominantly the answer. And as they add more and more chains, they'll have much more awareness. And I think that will all come to fruition and they'll probably skyrocket the next time they integrate some new coin or, or whatever, but we'll see. They lost a lot with Luna because they had recently added Luna trading to their platform. And when that all went out, that made them take a major hit as well, which is understandable. But Thorchain is built on Atom, which I love, the Cosmos blockchain. And again, the application of what it offers is very, very worthwhile. And if you haven't checked out my video, essentially, it allows you to do decentralized cross-chain swaps very quickly and efficiently. Uh, normally, if you were trading on Uniswap or any of these crypto exchanges, PancakeSwap, you can only trade in one cryptocurrency. So Uniswap, you're trading Ethereum and ERC-20 tokens. PancakeSwap, you're trading Binance and BEP20, etc. So that makes sense, but you can only trade within those individual ecosystems. When you go to use a swap exchange that isn't using smart contracts like Uniswap, etc., you might run into issues like if I use simple swap or block trades or whatever, um, it might take a while. Uh, there could be an issue with the trade transaction, whatever it happens to be, there could be issues in there and um, it's harder to trust those platforms. When I use something like Thorchain, I can connect my wallet and directly trade versus sending it to simple swap and then simple swap doing the trade for me and then sending it back with Thorchain, you're sending it and it's all transacting and going through right away and uh, it's almost instantaneous it's by far one of the fastest and you can actually trade cross chain versus you know giving it to them having them buy it and give it back to you so it's much more decentralized and secure and it's just a much better way of doing decentralized trades with Thorchain. Again, you can go and check that out. I do have an interview actually coming out very soon with Brad or Chad Barraford from Thorchain. So do watch out for that as well. Not a lot has happened for um, Crypto Cash. This is also old, my apologies. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, for all that. So. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, where are you investing your cryptocurrency? Do you think Rune is a good bet? Uh, have you cashed in on your ETHW? There's so much going on in the market right now. It's feeling pretty bearish, but I am very bullish because you know I know lots and lots of stuff is happening for Bitcoin adoption. The halving is gonna come up in, in less than two years away now. We've got Ethereum finally went through the merge. You can get some free ETH, W. Um, you know, there's all this stuff going on. The surge for ETH is supposed to happen in the next like five to six months or whatever, early 2023. If that goes through, that's going to be momentous. Everyone's gonna come back to Ethereum and all these ETH competitors are gonna fall off because they're not even gonna be able to compete with ETH and they don't have any of the user base or applications or enterprise backing or you know wall street backing with etfs that you can invest in ethereum but there's no you know cosmos etfs etc though i think cosmos and atom is one of the best alternatives to ethereum and they actually offer good unique solutions that are relevant like thorchain uh and and several other things so but i think a lot of other things are going to fall off avalanche solana um just all these ETH alternatives. Binance is kind of like a staple now, so it'll probably be okay, but I don't see many applications or anything being built on there. It's very centralized. So, you know, once Ethereum comes back on top, I think a lot of these are gonna fall to the wayside. And uh, that's my outlook for the next, you know, six months to a year. I'm still very bullish on ETH and Bitcoin. Uh, and I hope a lot of these other cryptocurrencies go back up and follow with them as they, return to their previous prices and hopefully reach new all-time highs in the next couple of years so you know keep checking in i'll keep letting you guys know how my investment journey is going 
on our way to 2029, where I will hopefully have at least a million dollars and be able to retire. Given inflation hasn't completely made that amount of money not really valuable anymore, and I might need $2 million or whatever. But that's everything for today. Let me know if this was helpful for you, what insights you gathered from this. Let me know what you're investing in. Let me know all that good stuff in the comments below and make sure to comment hashtag number one ham to let me know that you did watch this video from start to finish. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scotty Business, signing off. Cheers.